Hey everybody, welcome back for another hackin' and slashin', slicin' and dicin' Mad Panic Game Review, where today we are taking a look at a game that is at once a sequel to a Neo Geo side-scroller from the late 90s, and a game that takes a lot of inspiration from some of the classic ninja action titles of old, and that is Gun Ryu 2 on the Nintendo Switch which was developed by Storybird Studio and published by Pixelheart. And after playing Andro Dunos 2, another modern sequel to a Neo Geo game that was also published by Pixelheart, I was excited to play Gun Ryu 2 and find out if it was another home run because I loved Andro Dunos 2. And while I've never played the original Gun Ryu, I'd honestly never even heard of it before playing this game, I am a big fan of the games that Gan Ryu 2 sought to emulate. So let's take a closer look and find out if this is an instant ninja classic or a reeking ninja fart. Silent, but deadly. Long distance hand fart kill. Before I start the review proper, I feel I should mention that when this game was first released, it was apparently plagued with bugs and was lambasted for being unfinished and very laggy, but soon after its release it was patched to fix at least most of those bugs, and that's when I finally picked it up. So be aware, if you get yourself a copy of Gan Ryu 2, you'll be needing to download the version 1.1.2 patch, or be faced with a much worse game than what I played. That being said, I thought the gameplay in Gan Ryu 2 was really good. When I first started playing, it was immediately apparent that the Shinobi series was a huge influence here, but I also picked up hints of Ninja Gaiden and Strider Hiryu. Essentially, it's like a lot of other action platformers get from point A to point B while slashing up enemies and collecting power-ups. But there's some seriously tricky platforming segments here that might have you pulling your hair out. I found it way more difficult than any other aspect of the game. As far as offensive abilities go, you've got quite a lot to make use of. For starters, you have a limited supply of ninja kunai to attack with from long range, and their attack strength can be temporarily greatly increased with a power-up. And for close combat, you have your trusty katana sword that you can rapidly slash with. Again, like a mix of Shinobi and Strider. You also have a dash attack, which is very handy, not only for getting through enemy defenses, but also for clearing some big gaps and other various bits of platforming that'll have you wall jumping, double jumping, and air dashing your way to death after death after death before you finally get the sequence down. I said it already, but this is easily the most challenging aspect of this game but also the most fun, actually. There were so many tricky jumps and obstacles in some areas that I almost got a bit of a Donkey Kong Country vibe from them, and it was very satisfying when I finally cleared a section that was giving me a lot of trouble. And when you do finally have the stages figured out, it's really fun to blow through them as quickly as possible while annihilating all of the enemies that get in your way. Finally, you have a variety of ninja magic abilities that you can pull off when your spirit gauge is full. And these include a screen clearing super attack, a boost to your attack strength, or the one that I found the most useful, the ability to fully regenerate your health. It takes a while to build up your spirit energy though, and you lose all of it if you die, so it's not something that you can always rely on. And with that are the boss battles, which I honestly thought were the weakest aspect of the game. Some of them can be a little tricky at first, but once you learn their attack patterns, they're almost 
too easy. There are also a few segments thrown in to mix up the gameplay a bit, like a minecart area and a side-scrolling shoot-em-up section, which is fun if a bit basic, but for the vast majority of the game, you'll be hacking and slashing, jumping and dashing, taking out legions of enemies, and discovering areas loaded with point bonuses and power-ups. In terms of presentation, I found Ganryu 2 to be a bit of a mixed bag. There is a story to follow along with, but it's honestly not particularly interesting. There's a bad guy that wants to take over Japan with his hordes of demons, and you're the good guy, named Musashi by the way, and you want to stop the bad guy's evil plan. Not exactly Shakespeare, but perfect for a game like this. There are cutscenes sprinkled throughout the game to move the story along, but they're honestly not very interesting either. The visuals in Ganryu 2 are really nice in spots, some of the stages featuring really detailed and colorful backgrounds, and overall the art direction in these areas is great, but there are also a lot of caves to run around in which are much less impressive to look at. I like the design of Musashi himself though, you have to respect any ninja warrior who isn't afraid to wear pink. The visuals and weird fashion choices aside though, I did enjoy the music in Ganryu 2. It's a cool mix of traditional Japanese instruments like shamisen, shakuhachi, and taiko drums with kind of a late 90s early 2000s electronic sound that came out really well. If nothing else, it's very fitting to the game and helps to drive the action forward. Fight Ninja. So my final verdict is that Ganryu 2 is a very good action platformer that mixes in a lot of elements from other games to great effect. It's not a perfect game, mind you, it's too difficult in some spots and too easy in others and there is still the occasional glitch to deal with but overall, I really enjoyed this game, and I can recommend it to anyone with a love of the classic ninja action games of old. It's Gun Ryu 2, and it's awesome. They're perfect to prank your family and your friends. Fight ninja. So there you go, everybody. That's my little review of Gun Ryu 2. Uh, which is on a bunch of consoles. I played it on the Switch, obviously, and I think the digital version is like five bucks now on the Nintendo eShop, so definitely pick it up if you thought it looked cool. And uh, let me know down in the comments, what do you think of games that are basically released unfinished and then have to be patched later? Because that's uh, apparently what happened with this game. Uh, I mentioned it in the review, but when it was initially released, it was just like buggy and laggy, and everyone said it was unplayable. And I didn't pick it up until after the patch had been released to fix all those bugs. Uh, so I had a great time with it. I thought the gameplay was pretty smooth and it was fun. And uh, fairly challenging and not an overly long game. So uh, a good experience for me. But if you're someone who picked it up before it was patched and then uh, you had to play through it all laggy and crappy, I can, I can easily see why you'd want to put it down and never pick it up again. Um, but try it out with those patches uh, included. It's a much better game, apparently. Uh, so yeah, tell me down in the comments, have you played Gone Ryu 2? And if so, what did you think of it? And are there other games similar to Gone Ryu 2 that you think I'd enjoy playing? I'd like to know about that too. And until next time, thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you then. Goodbye.